afternoon. Hello everybody. Good afternoon. It is Friday the 29th of September and you're joining me live hopefully um, for the September social media roundup. Um, I'm going to give it a couple of minutes while I see if anyone turns up. Um, apologies for being a little bit late today. It's been one of those days that has been fantastic and I've had a, a couple of really um, amazing meetings and met some wonderful people and called a couple of clients. But yeah, it's um, time's crept on and I realise that I'm like half an hour late. So really sorry about that, peeps. Um, so we've got quite a few things to talk about, not, not heaps, but I will try and keep this to within the usual 20 minutes um, update. And today I'm I'm giving it a go standing up and seeing how um, see how I feel doing it this way. So um, for anybody who's new watching this, um, my name's Natalie Sherman now actually. You might know me as Natalie Luck, I'm usually, but Natalie Sherman uh, and I am the owner and founder of Naturally Social. We are a social media uh, training and management consultancy. And um, yeah, we help to take the fear out of social media and help you shine, uh, outshine your competitors online. So what I do is uh, every month I take to Facebook Live to update you with all the latest or the top news from the uh, social media industry that month and what that could mean for you guys who are using it in your marketing and communications. Uh, stay right to the end. I try, if I remember, to give a top tip as well. Um, if anybody wants to sign up to my newsletter, I also send out free information and, uh, and advice as well uh, over on my newsletter. So um, you can sign up there via my Facebook page on the left hand side of the tab. Cool, but let's get started. First things first, talking about Twitter. And um, in the news, I'm sure many of you avid users have noticed yesterday, um, they are trialing a 280 character limit. Um, so usually, as many people know, 140 characters is an art form, writing 140 characters. Um, and that has been a turn off for many business users, I'd say, many individuals to get to grips with um, to get to grips with using it. So giving them, so that's not being rolled out across the board, but there are certain users who are being given the opportunity to trial um, the 280 character limit. You'll know if you have it, because when you start tweeting, the character count has disappeared, and you've now got a little circle that starts to um, count down, if you like, it kind of fills up, so you're quarter of the way to your length, halfway, three quarters, etc um, and I'd be really interested to know if any of you have got the new limit to trial or if uh, what your thoughts are obviously obviously this is a very controversial issue for many avid Twitter users who right now all they want is a edit button the biggest thing that many people will say on Twitter is let us edit tweets um, but no they've decided to give a, an extended length on their tweets first whether or not this will get rolled out across the board, who knows, but um, we'll see. I have access on a few of the accounts that I manage, um, and to be honest, I, I'm not, I'm not going to find myself using it. I have, over the last sort of seven years or so of using Twitter, would like to think I'm quite good at writing in 140 characters, um, but yeah, give it a whirl, look out for that, that changing symbol, you'll know, and I, again, I'd like to hear your thoughts on whether or not an extended character limit on Twitter is a good thing or a bad thing. Oh, one point whilst I'm going actually, if you know anybody that you think would value watching this or would find this useful, tag them in the comments below or share this out to your audience um, or, and let them know that I'm live streaming and that they will, they'll find some use from the social, from social media marketing info. Uh, if you've got any questions as well as we go, or any comments, please just add them, and I do monitor the screen here, so I'll pick them up as we go. So pop any comments, thoughts, give me some thumbs up, spread the love, that'd be fantastic. 
Um, okay, another um, update I found the uh, recently was that uh, if you're using TweetDeck, um, or indeed if you have a team of people who use Twitter, um, Twitter have now added a Teams feature into its iOS uh, to its iOS and Android users on TweetDeck, which basically means no sharing of passwords anymore. So it's um, yeah, a bit like I guess Hootsuite or Buffer or anything, but you can without setting up another channel just by using Twitter's very own TweetDeck. Uh, a multitude of your team members can have access to that one account without you having to give access to passwords and then having to worry that they've deleted the app and you know your security issues etc so um yeah i think that is a cool feature there's a lot of organizations that i know and have worked with in the past that um should make use of that um okay that's the biggest things really on twitter uh instagram there's been a lot of changes uh hi Lynette. Uh, there's been a lot of changes on instagram um this month or a few changes i say um they're testing uh four by four grid layout so and there's a lot of again avid instagrammers who are like ah give us back our three by three layout because some of their content is uh, has been created to fit in that three by three look um, but I believe from what I've read, you can actually uh, revert back to the original uh, layout. Um, but yeah, so that's, that's, a, that's a tiny change that they're, I say tiny, that's a change that they're introducing to their platform. They're also testing cross sharing of stories from Instagram onto Facebook. Um, as we know, Facebook owns Instagram, so it kind of makes sense. Um, but yeah, if you're adding live content or adding content in general to your story, they're testing the option to then share it and publish it over onto your Facebook story, which is interesting because last month I spoke about um, uh, the fact that I'd noticed Facebook testing um, the ability to uh, live, uh, to create stories, sorry, as a business page. So in my story feed at the top, I noticed a couple of brands that I follow had actually created a story as well. So that would be really interesting with this change to Instagram, which will allow businesses and therefore incentivize businesses to use the stories feature more if they can create content on their Instagram account and cross post it onto their Facebook story page story as well. So hi, Martin. Thanks for joining. I hope you're all right. Um, just talking about Instagram and you can catch up on the replay for updates about Twitter um yeah so that's an interesting element and again if you are um if you have a facebook page and you're a business that's using instagram as well you really need to be getting onto stories and um yeah this will allow you to cross post it fingers crossed let's see um mm -mm -mm, what else have we got um new comment controls actually new comment controls on instagram uh, particularly useful for your personal profiles um, if you get if you've got a public profile and um, you get spammed quite frequently or you know you want to have have a bit more control generally on who actually comments on your um, on your posts they now allow you to control that under your settings so you can actually select uh, who's allowed to comment on this post friends only nobody anybody etc everybody except and you can block certain people as well uh, so that's found if you go onto your account and then go into the cog on the top right corner drop that down under settings and then you'll have comment control on there so that's a good move by um, Instagram there to kind of fulfill a step closer towards um, uh, safety uh, safety of its users really on its channel uh, okie okay, so that's Instagram uh, that's Twitter and Instagram. Next, we'll talk about Facebook updates here. Um, one thing to note, which many of you might not have noticed if you manage a page, is that they have um, retired certain elements of boosting posts um, or, uh, yeah, so boosting post options. So, not the main ones. So, you can still boost a post and you can still boost an event, but there are certain options that weren't being used at all or, or very little that they've actually removed. And what I'll do is I'll share the article in full in the comments after I've finished so you can see the detailed list 
of the advertising options that it's now removed. Stuff like, for instance, um, one of the things that stuck out for me was the fact that you can no longer boost an image or a video that's been directly created in Facebook camera. So if you open up the app uh, as a page, for example, um, and you create content, it's removing the ability to boost the post of you creating that content natively there. But yeah, I'll um, add these. So that's the main biggest one, but others are like, um, you can't and uh, no longer boost your shop button and stuff like that. So I'll put in the link anyway, so you can see the details. Um, uh, adverts manager and power editor are becoming one so this is something that might not mean much to many of you but there are different ways you can advertise uh, on Facebook traditionally most people use the boost post option but if you want greater control more flexibility and better value for money and creating multiple advert sets um, so this will be more relevant for marketeers um, you use the adverts manager and a step above that is the power editor, that's what it's called. Um, however, Facebook are merging the two together um, to create one advertising platform. You'll still be able to boost posts generally as you do on, on your page, but yeah, there'll be one advertising platform. So once I've familiarized myself with that, um, I will probably do a webinar on how to use um, the adverts manager on Facebook and let you all know. Um, round page profile pictures. I tweeted about that a couple of weeks ago. If you have a business page, your square profile image is going to become circular, uh, similar to uh, Instagram basically. So make sure that if you do have any logos um, or images currently as your profile picture on Facebook, uh, on your Facebook page, make sure you get it edited, updated, amended, so that it fits into a circular size, because that will be changed over in the coming weeks. Um, uh, personally, for personal profiles, they've introduced a new snooze feature. So if you're on Facebook a lot to uh, for work purposes, for example, I get a lot of this from my clients who say they get distracted by all the updates and notifications that pop through. Well, you can now um, snooze things like updates from everybody or updates from pages or notifications, etc. And you can set that for an hour, a week, a month. Um, so yeah, and that's in your notifications section. So I think that's a really cool addition uh, to Facebook and I've certainly used it already. Um, as you can imagine, I'm on Facebook a lot and it just allows me to uh, focus my time and kind of drown out those other notifications. You'll still see them if you go into the notifications bar after, they'll still be there. Um, but yeah, that's uh, the new snooze button. And then finally, one thing uh, to note actually for advertisers and if you have um, um, perhaps bricks and mortar businesses, the, uh, they've started to introduce a way to advertise to potential customers um, who you don't have their data already on Facebook, um, but they have been past your uh, building or shop before. Basically, using, I know some people cringe at this, but again, I'll share the article so you can read in more details. Um, basically, Facebook is going to start using location service data for adverts. So, if your phone is um, is collecting the data, hi Rachel, is collecting the data of where you're going past. So, if you walk past a local pub or M&S or whatever, if it collects that data, um, then Facebook is going to be um, yeah, being able to tap into that service data for you to then advertise to them. So, yes, interesting. Um, it's basically allowing you to convert more um, actions, sales, I guess, from offline behavior, which is a, a big shift. So, um, yeah, again, I'll post details of that in the comments once I've finished. How are we doing for time? 14 minutes, okay, let's crack on. Few couple more things really. Um, WhatsApp, they have now introduced verified business accounts. So if you, um, yes, adverts can be bothersome, Rachel. 
Um, but you do have control over what adverts you see um, and you can tell Facebook what you're interested in and what you want to, um, to, to see in your personal news feed as well, just by clicking on the drop down arrow um, and um, remove the adverts basically. And then it will actually invite you to tell Facebook what you want to be advertised for, uh, at or with too. <laughs> It's late in the day. Um, uh, and if you are advertising on Facebook as a business and you find that bothersome, then let's have a conversation and I can uh, walk you through the best way to do it. Uh, yes, so back to WhatsApp. They're really, again, another platform owned by Facebook and they're really pushing the business use of this platform with the introduction of verified business accounts. If you, uh, with introduction of green ticks, very much like the blue tick on Twitter and Facebook, um, which means that uh, it's a legitimate business that can communicate, uh, that is communicating with you. So it's definitely going to be looking into next year, big uplift and shift I think to businesses looking to use or the opportunities for businesses to use WhatsApp particularly as many much more people prefer that one-to-one -one quick text quick messenger exchange um, and certainly I subscribe to a lot of businesses who use WhatsApp to communicate um, I really enjoy what they do oh yeah so keep an eye out for that um, if you have a lot of customers, you could be sending appointment reminders, uh, forms of newsletters, daily questions, etc., etc. Lots of potential. Um, but yeah, so they are pushing their business uh, program on WhatsApp, and I'll keep you updated with that. Okay, so lastly, let's talk about Snapchat. Always got Snapchat in these because um, I love it. But um, biggest thing really of the last month is that UK users can now create their own custom filters directly through the app. Um, hi Tash. Yeah, so this was a feature I mentioned a couple of months ago. It was only available to users in the US. Ooh, ooh, it's that. <laughs> it's only available to people in the US, but um, now UK users can create your own custom geo filter directly from your Snapchat app um, just by going into your settings. These are only templates, mind you, um, so there will be predefined templates that you can use, whether it be for a birthday, a wedding, celebration, um, but uh, if you want to create something a bit more bespoke, then you'll still have to go through the usual design route and go into Snapchat via the desktop. So yeah, that's very cool, and they're literally cheap as chips, like a couple of quid. So if you're going to an event, and it's definitely worth doing, you're right, Rachel, absolutely. If you're going to an event, having a birthday, or all your mates are on Snapchat, have a play, go and use the templates. Um, yes, yeah, so that's now available to UK and Europe users. Um, and two more things to finish off with Snapchat. Lots of augmented reality being used now on the app. If you haven't noticed or you, you're not a user, what you will find is um, what you'll see is that you've now got lots of um, augmented reality. Basically, you can um, put your camera up to a sky or the ground and then you can overlay uh, filters so you can change the way the sky looks or the ground works, etc. Ground looks, sorry. Um, with a new reality filter, and it's basically in 3D, 4D. Um, and they certainly uh, followed that through as well with 3D, um, 4D bitmojis. So you used to have a little character that used to be um, two-dimensional on your phone. Now Snapchat allows you to point and shoot again and put your person, this character, in front of you um, in real life. It's It can be mind-blowing. I love it. It's a lot of fun. What it does is it echoes to me a uh, Snapchat stance on really trying to do something different. And okay, they recognize that Instagram and whoever have ripped off what they were doing with stories, but it knows it's got a niche. And augmented reality is something that is is happening and it's going to get getting bigger and bigger. And you're going to see more of that in the future. And that's the angle that they're going down. Um, so yeah. All right, Kaz. Hi, Amy. Nice to see you. Um, next time, we'll come 20 minutes earlier. <laughs> um, yeah, so that's AR on Snapchat, and that is a big tip for social media trends next year. Lots of AR going to be coming your way. 
And lastly, just a quick warning for people who um, use Snapchat on a personal level or their kids or know of kids and have the um, iOS 11, just to let you know, there's apparently, I mean, I don't have the iOS 11 yet, but if you have, um, if you have it and there's apparently a new, cap uh, new function to allow you to screen record somebody. Um, so what was happening is apparently uh, people who were uh, sending out their stories on Snapchat, other users were able to screen record that entire bit like used to screenshot their picture and now you can um yeah screen record their snaps but i have read from snapchat that they've because a lot of hoo-ha and um quite rightly some concerns about safety and and stealing of people's content um to perhaps use against cyber bullying and stuff um they said that both users the content creator and the watcher the viewer has to have ios 11 in order um for the screen recording to be taken but that aside um it doesn't notify us no exactly it doesn't even notify you however for uh, snapchat have come back and i'll post the article to say that they're looking into the error um, again, you have to both be on iOS 11 to screen record, um, but they're working on it. They know that it's a bug, they're going to fix it. Cool. So, guys, 20 minutes in, that's it. That's all I've got. We talked about Twitter, changes to Instagram, Facebook, WhatsApp, and Snapchat. Um, my uh, top tip actually today is going back to Facebook because this is coming up quite a lot with some of the small businesses um, who have pages. Um, if you're sharing out content onto your Facebook page, don't simply share it. You need to add your own thoughts or comments. Uh, and when you are sharing something, think about whether or not your audience is going to care that you've shared that. A lot of people I see running pages are just sharing out industry relevant news or um, something that their friend who runs a business that they've done and their engagement is zero on those posts and then they wonder why their engagement is going down and down and down in general well that's because um to, in a long story short facebook penalizes you when your content doesn't get engagement because it doesn't think you're a good content creator um and therefore you're not creating stuff that people want to engage with uh so simply sharing something on your page to your audience is a little bit lazy uh, and it's not thinking of the user first. It's not thinking, why would they find this useful? Why am I, why am I sharing this? What do I need to tell them? That's my top tip for today, for this month. Cool. I did say last month that I do plan on um, creating more, uh, more videos more often. That's still very much the plan. Bear with me. I hope to get, I to get either fortnightly or weekly. We'll see. Um, but yeah, as I said at the beginning, in the meantime, if you want to subscribe to my newsletter, please do. It's in, uh, you can find it on the left hand tab of my Facebook page. I email out tips, uh, sign up to the events section. Uh, and thank you, Rach. Very well done. Love you. Um, she's kindly reminded me not to forget about plugging my vacancy. I'm looking for a social media assistant. It's only eight hours a week or only it's eight hours a week for now. It's a six month temporary contract. Ideal for anybody who's looking for some top up hours in a temporary job for somebody who is um, looking to get into into the social media industry. Um, yeah. Or who has uh, uh, some spare hours and is looking for that experience and wants to get involved. Hopefully there's going to be opportunity for that position to grow and the contract to be extended. If you want to apply, um, you can find the pinned post on my page with the job description. Um, and yeah, drop me an email, natalie at naturallysocial.co.uk if you've got any questions. That's it from me, I think. Um, yeah, have a wonderful weekend. Next time I'll be live streaming is the end of October unless I get to it sooner, like I said, in which case I'll let you know. Sign up to the events section of my page and every event that I add will be on there. So much love to everybody. Have a fantastic weekend. Stay social and I'll see you next time. Bye.